A common belief about Buddhism is that it's all about accepting change. As long as you realize that things change and are okay, that's the best kind of happiness you can find. We hear this so much that it often comes as a surprise that when you look in at a canon, the Buddha never says this in his images for the practice. Never involve people who simply relax, sit back, and accept. His most common images are warriors and people who are searching. That's the person searching for heartwood. We have to learn how not to be satisfied with twigs and branches, but to go all the way to the heartwood. There's a person looking for what can be gotten out of a snake. He has to learn how to catch the snake properly. Life is a search. We're all searching for happiness in one way or another, and most people end up defeated. But the Buddhist path was not like that at all. As he said, it's the unexcelled victory in battle. We're doing battle with our defilements, battle with our misunderstandings about what happiness is, our misunderstandings about what suffering is, battle with our greed, aversion, and delusion. Which means that there's work to be done, and it's in this context that we develop equanimity. The equanimity of a searcher, the equanimity of a warrior. The searcher is the sort of person who has a clear idea of what he or she wants and realizes that this may take time and this may require skill. And that's what you have to be equanimous about. Accepting the reality of the situation. And so you can focus on what you really want, what really needs to be done to get what you want. One of the images for equanimity of the Buddha uses is an elephant battle. It's surrounded by all kinds of horrible things. Horrible sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, seeing other animals being taken down, hearing the cries of the animals who are suffering, the people who are suffering, hearing the cries of the enemy, smelling the blood. Getting struck with lances and things, but the elephant has to just keep on doing its work. You can't let those other things get in the way. In the same way, we live in a world where there's a lot that goes on that it's pretty horrible. And it's not that we don't care, it's just that we realize that you can't solve the problems of the world at, at the end. You have to solve them at the beginning. And the beginning lies where? It lies inside the human heart, each human heart each animal's heart. You can't be responsible for the hearts of others, but you can be responsible for yours. Otherwise, if you simply focus on looking after other people, it is a form of generosity, and it does develop good qualities inside. But you realize you can never come to the end. I saw a faith healer in Brazil one time, and the line of people stretched stretch for hours. And you stop to think about it. All these people who have the karma for illnesses. You treat the illnesses, you're treating the end of the issue. And it is good if you have the skill to treat the end of the issue, but it's never going to come to an end. 
the end is when you turn around and look at for the source of the issue inside. We suffer, but we don't understand our suffering. And when the Buddha says, suffering is the five clinging aggregates, our immediate reaction is, what? What does that have to do with my suffering? It seems abstract, far away, technical. But it really has to do with what you're doing. Because the aggregates are activities, they're actions. Even form is something you actively maintain. Your perception of form is something you have to keep up. Feelings, perceptions, you feel, you perceive, you fabricate thoughts, you're aware. These are things you're doing, and you cling to them in ignorance. And that's the suffering. It is an active verb. And for most of us, we don't think of it that way. It's because we don't think of it that way, that's why we're defeated by it. And John Lee's images of knowing that you have an enemy and then trying to kill the enemy by stabbing his shadow. It doesn't work that way. You have to attack the actual enemy. In this case, you have to attack the actual clinging. Otherwise, if you attack physical pains, disappointment, you try to end these things. But as long as it's still clinging, there's still going to be suffering. So try to take advantage of the Buddha's analysis. Because he's pointing out something that you should be searching for, how to understand suffering, how to put an end to it, how to look inside and where to look inside, how to look inside, so you can really comprehend it. And you can abandon the cause. And that's what victory is. It's the goal of the search. It's the goal of the battle. Learning how to look for happiness in the right places and finding it. And the equanimity is there to, to gird you so you're up for the battle. And you have the strength to realize that whatever it takes, I can do it. And realizing that because you have limited strength, you have to focus your efforts on where they really will be productive. So you have to be equanimous about everything that's not helpful in this quest. Other you know, people may not like it, they may criticize you for not getting with the, their program. But what is their program? Where does that come from? What kind of victory are they looking for? And if their campaigns went out, how lasting is the victory? And how is it really relevant to the big issues that keep eating away at their hearts? The Buddha is offering what he calls unexcelled victory, and he's right. And to follow his path, it requires perseverance. And perseverance requires being very selective in where you put out your energy, how you maintain your energy, and how you don't squander it. So think of equanimity in this context. The Buddha's equanimity is not defeatist. It's the equanimity of a victor. 